Hello and welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Ronnie Sharp and I'm wearing a t-shirt with baddies on it. Um, in this uh, screencast, I'm going to be showing you how to um, uh, link your navigation, say it's on the sidebar, with uh, the content block. Um, so what I mean is when you scroll down the different content, the navigation on the side will update and tell the user where they are. So um, I've mocked together a simple example. Um, and I'm using Chrome. So nice big fat font just to be able to show you. Um, what I'm really looking for is a scroll bar here so that you have to scroll to get to the particular block of content. Um, I've left the spacer just down at the bottom, no big deal. Um, and when you click on the uh, link on the side, it'll take you to the different block of navigation. And what we want to do is when we scroll down to the second block of navigation, the link over here updates. Um, and it will show you that you're currently on this block. Um, for this uh, for this screencast, I'm going to show you how to just switch navigation. In um, the next screencast, or maybe not the next one, but the one after that, I'll show you how to animate that. So, so that what happens is um, the selected block kind of just floats down, um, and in a kind of you know, uh, it, it's scrolling with you as you go along. So. This is the uh, the page, um, pretty straightforward. I've got a fixed position uh, sidebar over here and just a, a, a tool content block. And what we want to do is we need to dynamically detect when the user has scrolled. So uh, the key to this is when the user scrolls, do something. Now what we want to say is when the user scrolls, look for the heading that is currently in uh, the viewport in the current you know browser view and find the ID that that h1 is sitting inside of so if I, let me just pull you, pull up um, web inspector and go to the elements tab and show you that the second h1 is sitting inside of a section element with the ID of second so we're going to use that h1 to navigate up the DOM and get this section element get the ID from that and use the second that ID to find this particular block of navigation. So how do you find um, uh, navigation based on the ID? Well the, the I've done it, I've used this several times with uh, my tutorial so um, let me just show you this uh, URL. Let me just uh, jump to source code actually because it'll be a bit clearer. So here we've got straightforward list. No no uh, no issues there. And the href points to the ID of the element that we want to link to. This is the hash. So to find the anchor that has the hash that matches an ID. So let's take second as our ID. Let's open up console. Check that I've got jQuery on the page. No, I don't. Okay, let's get the right version of jQuery in here. Um, actually, let's... Uh, we haven't got it yet. So um, I'm just going to grab the link. Bear with me. I'll be back in one minute. Okay, so we're back, and I've got the uh, uh, the link from Google. So that's the uh, jQuery uh, link I want. Um, let me just put this in. Now, refresh the page. We've got jQuery on the page. Now, I want to find this href. And I have an ID of second. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is look for the links that are inside of the nav element. I'm going to filter it, to, uh, and then I'm going to change my um, query. So currently we have four elements, and I'm going to change this to say search based on the hash attribute. So that's this, um, the the, ha the pound symbol for the uh, for the Americans and the hash symbol for the uh, uh, the UK guys like me and gals. Um, and if I just do hash equals second dot length, I get that element. So um, if I pass in an ID here, oops, like this, you can see that we can use the ID of a, a DOM node as the um, as the thing that we use to find the right navigation element. So we've got that piece of information. The trick really is working out which H1 is in the viewport. So thankfully, there is a jQuery plugin for that. Um, jQuery viewport plugin and we actually want this one viewport selectors so I'm going to go over to that site just show you where to get it from um, uh, so there is a link at the bottom of this page 
get a source of Minified. I've already grabbed the Minified version of the page, but this is how it works. Basically, it extends your jQuery selector so you can do in viewport. So we can say, find me all the elements that are in the viewport. So um, I've saved it under uh, jQuery viewport source, uh, jQuery.viewport.min.js. And if I just refresh that, I should have it on the page. And now I should be able to do um, h1 in viewport dot length. I've got one. Let's check the text of that. Okay, let's scroll down and just repeat the same uh, same function. Okay, that's saying it doesn't have anything. I'll come back to that in a second. Okay, why didn't that work? I've got a feeling that might not be an H1. Ah, yeah, it's an H2. So at the point where there was no H1s on the page, it failed. So that's something we're going to have to deal with um, later on in our code. But if you can see, I'm scrolling down to the third section at H1s in view. We can see that text is updated. So we're going to use the in view um, selector to be able to work out which H1 is in view. Okay, so let's get cracking with some code. So the first thing we need to do is um, I'm including my scripts at the bottom of, uh, of jQuery so I don't have to do document.ready. Okay, because it's at the bottom of the document, it's already ready, so I don't need to do this. So I'm going to just do window.scroll. Whoops. And this event's going to fire whenever I scroll up and down the page. So what we could do here is drop into the console um, h1 dot in view port dot text and let me just open up my console and just scroll up and down. Oops, refresh it first. Yeah, so you can see it's finding me the h1 that's in view. Now what if there's two h1s in view? Well we can chain and we can do first. So that ensures that the first H1 is the is the one that we're going to use. So this is the H1 that we need. So let's let's start building up um, the ID, or let's go and find the ID of the element that we want the uh, uh, of the element that's currently on the page. So we're going to do in view equals, and we're going to do H1. So now that we've got this H1. What I want to do is using jQuery, I'm going to navigate up and find the ID. So we've got the H1, we're going to do dot parent and then do attribute ID. So I'm going to do dot parent dot attr ID. Okay, let's log this out into the console. Okay, cool. So we've got undefined, we've got second, first, and so on. It's good. Now, um, just a point about this, I would normally not use uh, ATR, I would just do 0.ID, but because um, this could be undefined, we want to use jQuery's functions because they fail silently and we're going to make use of that as well. So, um, we've got the H1, now I know that actually I want it to be just the H1s that sit directly inside of the content and with the, the first H1 that's nested inside of a section. So let's just tighten up our, our selector. I'm going to do content section h1. Now it should still give me the same thing, but I'm just um, allowing my page to grow so that if my, my content blocks have several h1s or nested h1s, it's absolutely fine. It still works based on that, that very top one. So the next thing we want to do is find the link in the navigation bar that has a hash matching this in view. So Let's do uh, console uh, console dot log, and I need to do nav a. So these anchor elements inside of my nav element, and I'm going to do dot filter. Uh, or in fact, I don't need to do dot filter. I can just do it here. Hash equals then the uh, hash or pound sign, and I'm just going to append the ID. Okay, so let's just do dot length so we check that we actually have the element. Let's scroll up and down. Cool, so we've got something there. Let's just drop in the text instead. 
Cool. So that's these uh, the, the text from these links. So we're going to use this now since we found the element we're after. Okay, let's just put this in here. Dollar link equals that. Okay, we're going to use this to say if that uh, or basically select that now. So let me let me build up. So we're just going to do add class select. Uh, oops, add class selected. Okay, let's get rid of our console. Refresh. So you can see it working, but the problem is the actual um, the navigation elements they're all selected. So what we need to do is get rid of the uh, selected class link, uh, not link. Sorry, nav a remove class selected. Okay, kind of working. You see where it disappears at this point. So what we want to do is only run this code if um, this particular link isn't selected already. So we're going to do if dollar link dot is selected. So we're going to do uh, if link is not already selected, then run this code. Remove the selected class from all the uh, the anchors in the navigation, then add it to the particular one that we found. So let's try that out. Cool. But it breaks at this point. Now let's have a look at why that breaks. Um, in fact, the, the reason it's breaking is because this is still true, but remember we saw undefined? So we need to check that link has actually matched anything. So we do link.length. So if I refresh it, so it sits on a second nav while we're inside of that block, and I'm scrolling down, and the third item has come in already. Now. Maybe um, maybe using the H1 is too sensitive, so we can actually tweak that if we want to. We could change this from the um, the in view H1. We could actually ch move the in view to the section. So you see that's less sensitive at this point. So the content is a little uh, a little bit further to the top, and actually maybe that's a better choice for this particular example. But this is a very easy way of using the in view selector to actually work out. Which um, which block of contents in view and actually linking that back to uh, the navigation. So uh, hopefully this uh, this tutorial was uh, useful. Um, I will show you how to animate that sidebar later on. Um, but otherwise, if you have any comments or feedback, please drop a comment on jQueryForDesigners.com. Otherwise, thanks for watching.